Welcome to episode 149, How to Be Fashionable After 50. Something happens to a woman once she hits 50. She's no longer young, but she's definitely not ready to be old either. However, current fashions may no longer work for her changing body. Are women over 50 relegated to either shopping in the matron department and aging themselves or looking like they're trying too hard? In this podcast, I offer seven steps to help you stay stylish at 50 and well beyond. Is your style in need of a jumpstart? Then I have just the thing for you. Find Your Signature Style is my flagship course, and it is a culmination of everything I have been teaching my clients for 14 years. This course gives you exactly what you need to build the foundation for your style, to build your wardrobe, to learn how to love shopping, and to fall in love with your style. Whether you feel like you don't have a style, you've lost your style, or your style just needs a little bit of a jump start, this is exactly the course for you. Designed to give you all the elements you need in three simple steps. We make finding your style as easy as one, two, three. Click the link in the show notes or go to findyoursignaturestyle.com and get ready to rock your style today. Welcome to Style by Mary Michelle, a podcast designed to empower you through personal style. I'm your host, Mary Michelle Nidefer, a master style coach, founder of Style Finder Boutique, and creator of the Style Finder ID system. I'm here to help you know what to wear, how to wear it, and how to get dressed in seven minutes or less. Let's go. Hello, beautiful, and welcome back. Now today, as I talk with you, I have just hit 55. I just had a birthday and I had to share this topic with you because it's something that's been on my mind a lot lately. And as I've started out the new year, giving myself a uh, little bit of a style overhaul um, to align with my goals for the year, then I'm asking myself a lot of questions about my style. So this topic is something that I just, I had to share because being fashionable after 50, I feel like it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a weird zone. It's like, we're not old, but we're not young anymore. And we're not ready to just, you know, go to the matronly, um, I don't even remember what it's called, but the matronly section in the department stores, that is not where we want to go. And what I've found is that, you know, my body's changed in several ways and junior pieces, not that I really shopped in the juniors department um, ever, but junior pieces, you know, they don't work. A lot of trendier pieces are cut for a, um, how can I say it, less mature figure. So even though we may have some mature considerations, we're not ready. We're not over the hill. 50 is the new 30, I think. And being 50 today is not what it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. I think when I was growing up, when my mom hit 49, now my mom is an exception. She's always been very hip and looks chic. But I think a lot of women in that generation, once they hit 50, they start, you know, they cut their hair short, they get a perm, they start wearing sensible shoes, which I cannot stand that word, (laughs) and really just kind of relegate themselves to, um, to not really cultivating their style. I think a lot of women give up. And what I know for a fact is that women are not ready to give up at 50, at 60, at 70, at every age. And That's a great thing. I think that's a wonderful thing. And I think in this day and age, we have so many great resources. However, even as a style coach, I find that it can be really tricky to know where to shop, what to find, what to buy, what to wear, how to put it all together for 
my changing body, because yes, ladies, I'm a human too. And my body has changed and my weight has changed and my style has changed. And it's like a moving target. So <laughs> I want to share some tips with you today, but I will tell you before we get started that I do have a few seats left for style reset retreat. It happens in January, which is January now, but it happens later this month, January 20th through 22nd and is going to be a three-day immersive style experience. And really, I guess the best way to describe it is a transformation from the inside out. And I don't know if you've ever worked with me personally, but I just love the work I do. And as I am stepping into becoming a certified style coach, not only am I a master style coach, but as I step into becoming a certified life coach, I meant to say, then putting the two together, it is a truly powerful combination. I've always been a personal growth junkie and I'm always, always, always learning and reading and taking classes and courses and working with mentors. I don't know. I'm just kind of obsessive in that way, but I have spent the better part of probably since the pandemic, really diving deep into my own stuff, if you will. And uncovering some things and then becoming a life coach has been life changing for me. And some things I've learned have just changed everything for me. Everything that I have learned in my 55 years, I'm like, okay, now I get to see things differently. So I cannot wait to share what I'm learning and what I'm uh, putting all, you know, just putting all together because Style from the inside out is truly the only way to go. It's what happened. I shouldn't say happened. <laughs> it kind of is what happened, but it's what happened years and years ago, 20 years ago to be exact, when I gave myself a makeover from the inside out. And it's been since then that I've really been on a journey, not just to cultivate the outside, but to cultivate the inside because the, when the inner matches the outer, that's where the magic happens. That's where you feel truly, truly aligned. And that's when you feel free, free. And it's the best feeling in the world to feel free, free from judgment, fear, guilt, criticism, all the things to just be able to let it go. And I, I just cannot wait to share what I've learned with you all, because I share all my style tips now. I mean, I, I give it all away on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you need to. Uh, it's style by Mary Michelle, but also go follow us at Shop Style Finder because uh, I'm on there sharing my tips, but also you get to see um, our other stylist, Camelia. She's been great and she shares some awesome stuff. So you see things from two different perspectives. She's in her early thirties. So it's from a different perspective and I've learned a lot from her. So it's been, it's been a good synergy. So if you haven't heard all about style reset retreat, click the link in the show notes because I have got some great stuff in store for you. And I just know that three days away, I know that from my experience, whenever I've gone away to something and I'm away from the distractions, I'm able to really focus and just that alone is when more transformation is able to happen. And what we're going to go through, what I'm going to take you through, lead you through is going to be fun, but it's also going to give you some crazy results. And so we're going to have a lot of fun together. These women are just incredible who have signed up. So I cannot wait. We've got some women coming from all over the place, but I would love to have you there if this speaks to you. I I do have a few spots available. We're, I'm going to treat you to a beautiful dinner on me Saturday night. Uh, I've got a wonderful dinner planned and beautiful wine and food. And we're just going to have a great time. I've had several people reach out and they're like, oh my God, I've been listening to you. I know I need to be there. And so I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And I'm so excited. Every time somebody signs up, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so jazzed. I just have been visualizing these women, you all in this room and these transformations happening. And I just, 
it's just so juicy and just so rich. And I love the work I do. And to have this time one on one or well, in person, I should say me and with all of you, although it is going to be an intimate group with us together in this room, it's going to be powerful. So do what you can clear calendars and make sure you are there. Because if you want to hit your goals, if you want to take your style to new heights, if you want to get over your stuff, your emotional stuff, I'm a highly sensitive woman and I am highly emotional and I have struggled for 54 and a half years with processing things and taking things personally and thinking things that don't, that aren't forwarding to me. And I now, only now, I don't know why I didn't have the sooner, but now I have tools to manage that. And I will want to, and I am going to share those with you so that you can incorporate those into your style, into your life, so that you can truly show up as the woman you are. That's what it's all about. It's not about dealing with all this stuff that just keeps us small, that holds us back, that keeps us feeling bad. That is not what life is about. Life is about us stepping into our power, us shining and being the women we're meant to be, us having fun, us enjoying life, getting out there and just being our fabulous selves. So come join me and I will hope to see you there. All right, let's talk about how to be fashionable after 50. Because from what I know, there are a lot of women out there. In fact, I would venture to say most women out there still want to be fashionable after 50. 50 is not a death sentence. 50 is not what it used to be. And I am so grateful that women of all ages have been coming into the forefront in advertisements, in magazines, And I think that there can be, in fact, I'm going to talk about this on a future podcast, but there can be a lot of ageism when it comes to fashion. But what I do know to be true, at least for myself and for most women that I work with, is women never want to look older than they are, which is kind of funny. Remember when you were growing up and like you were, I don't know, 16, 17, 18, you always wanted to look a little bit older. You wanted to look as old as the college guys, or you wanted to look like you're old enough to drink or get into the bar or at the restaurant. You wanted to look a little bit more sophisticated. Now we want to look younger. So I don't know, but I I think it's part of our beauty culture. But what I do know is most women do not want to look older than they are, but most women have told me they wouldn't mind looking younger. And I think our, the beauty industry really speaks for itself. Women are always trying to look a few years younger. And I'm not here to talk about that today. That's for a future episode. But what I am here to talk about is how to be fashionable after 50. Because as I mentioned earlier, it's like a moving target. And I think it can be tricky. But, you know, so many women come into the boutique and they tell me, oh, I used to have a great style when I was in my 20s. And I was a size six and everything fit and I could just run into any boutique and in five minutes, pick something out. Now it is a struggle. And I'm not necessarily going to tell you why it's a struggle. I've, I've talked about that on a few, um, I've talked about that on previous episodes, but what I do want to talk about is how you can be fashionable after 50, how you can stop the struggle, how you can really get clear on what you need And how to keep from falling into a rut. I think falling into a rut is more likely after 50 because it's more challenging. We have more things to think about. And if you're busy like me, then it can be really hard. It's like we have to think about our hair. Our hair is changing. Our skin is changing. Oh my gosh. I should do a whole podcast episode on my skincare journey, but I swear, I feel like I've, I've cracked the code and I have had a visit to the dermatologist and discovered some amazing skincare products that I have talked about on Instagram a little bit. And I'm going to be talking about more very soon because The good news is it's something that's available and accessible to pretty much everybody. 
at uh, drugstore prices. And most people don't know about it. And the funny thing is I was in France in September and didn't discover it. But I come back here, I go to my dermatologist in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I discover a French brand of skincare that everybody can buy. So I will be sharing that very soon. So keep an eye out. Come join me over in the Facebook group. It's called Style by Mary Michelle Podcast. I'm going to start doing lives over there. And I'm going to be diving deep into my closet journey, my style journey. I shouldn't say my closet journey. My, my, my whole closet was a journey. I tell you what, uh, and I've got pictures to prove it, but I got into my closet the other day in this, I don't know, this almost like frantic frenzy. It's like, I just felt this need to clear out what was not serving me. And I cleared out about four bags worth and we'll be donating those to friends or charities and, um, just time for some fresh things. And then I got into style finder the other day and I'm like, okay, time to do some shopping. And I'm starting to wear some things in different ways. Now you guys have probably heard me talk about skinny jeans. I am, I am not an advocate for getting rid of skinny jeans, but personally I have been gravitating more towards a cropped straight leg. I don't know. It just feels better. Skinny jeans, if I'm wearing boots, they feel perfect. But sometimes when I'm hanging out around the house, which I've been working more from home these days, and I'm not wearing shoes, I don't want a skinny jean. It just feels too constricting. Now, I love the way they look. I'm not an advocate for getting rid of them anytime soon. And I have heard from some European sources that skinny jeans are actually going to be coming back in which it seems like just a month ago or a season ago, people were saying they're out. (laughs) So I'm like, no, no, no. Skinny jeans are, are here to stay. They're a classic. They may not be in style, but they're a classic, but it's all about evolving in a way that works for you. And I think for my lifestyle and my body, I am loving a straight leg, but I don't like a full length straight leg. I like a cropped straight leg. I've been wearing those with sneakers, but I'm going to be diving in deep and talking about changes to my style and how I'm using my style to reach my goals, which I talked about on the last episode, because I've got some really big goals this year and um, not well, not ready to share all those right now. That's for, that's for a whole different episode, but one of my goals is to be fashionable at 55. That's right. I turned 55 yesterday and I am damn proud of it. 55 and still alive. (laughs) I keep telling, telling my kids, I'm like, yep, just hit double nickels. So time to celebrate. But 55 is kind of a weird age. It's like, am I closer to 60 or am I closer to 50? I'm like right in the middle. And 60, I think is going to be a big milestone, but I'm going to be really excited to turn 60 in five years. And well, There is something that I am looking towards in probably within the next five years that is driving some of the changes I'm making. And I'm not going to get into that here. Come follow me from in the podcast group to hear more about that journey. But that's a long-term goal. That's a long-term thing and isn't something that's going to happen overnight. So anyway, but let's talk about how to be fashionable over 50, because there are definitely some things that you want to think about that can help keep your style relevant, help keep you feeling like you're not invisible. We're not invisible. You're not meant to be invisible. And if you ever think that just because you've turned 40 or 50 or 60, that you're supposed to be invisible, stop. You're here. As long as you're alive, you are meant to be seen. As long as you're alive, you are beautiful, you are worthy, and you deserve to look and feel your best. All right, tip number one, let color work for you. Stop wearing what you've always worn or stop wearing so much black. Oh my gosh. Now, if you wear black because you love it, great. But you know, I've said this a million and one times. So if you've heard me talk about black, I love black. I wear, I've been wearing a lot of black. And so you guys are probably going to get mad at me, but don't hate me. But what I found is that so many women have told me that they wear black because they don't know what else to wear. And so let color work for you. 
So I talk about actually in our course, how to find your signature style. I talk so much about finding your new neutrals, finding your signature colors. Now I'll give you quick and easy ways to help discover those. And that can right there can be a game changer. I know when I made some simple shifts, it was like, wow, that looks really, really good. And I see it in my clients all the time. I've shot so many videos on this and it's like, whoa, what just happened? You just lost 10 years. Your wrinkles disappear. Now, here's what I am going to tell you about black. When you wear a lot of it around your face, oftentimes black can be an under eye circle enhancer. That's right. Black can enhance wrinkles. Black can draw color from your face. It can make you look tired. And there is a there are a whole host of things that it can do that you might not like. So think about that. Think about how you wear black. Think about why you wear black and think about what you could wear instead. But I also have videos on my Instagram about how to find your best red, which my best red is actually a, more of a berry color. And I don't wear red very often, but occasionally I do. But when you can find colors that work for you, that light you up, that brighten you, you know, it can be great as you get older to have your colors done, to reassess your colors. Because as we age, whether you color your hair or not, well, you should be lightening up your, your hair color, but you lose pigment from your skin tone and from your eyes. And so you need to adjust your colors that you're wearing. And as you do that, then use your personal coloring as a guide. That's what I always say. But let color work for you, not against you. If your coloring has faded and you're still wearing really strong, harsh colors, they're working against you. If you feel washed out, if you feel eclipsed or overwhelmed, maybe you're wearing a lot of black and white, but maybe it's harsh against your skin. Wear something else. In the course, I talk about a lot of things that you can do instead. So try that. Um, number two, know your assets. Know your assets and attributes. Now, what do I mean by that? I use that term all the time, assets and attributes. And what I mean by that is what are, are your assets? Do you have great legs? Do you have fabulous shoulders? Do you have a great smile? Do you have smooth skin? Do you have... I don't know what, what is it about you that you like to show off a small waistline, a well-proportioned body? What are your assets? Know your assets, because when you know to them, you can play to them. And when you play up your assets, people don't notice any of what I call your considerations. There are never any flaws. Now, your attributes are just, what are you? How are you proportioned? What's your body type? Are you large busted? Do you have large arms? What are your considerations? Know what you have to work with. When you know what your assets are and you know what your attributes or your considerations are, you know what you have to work with. And ladies, this is neutral without judgment. Well, I guess assets. Assets has a little bit of judgment, but it's understanding what are your best features and what are those things you want to play down that can help you to know where to put the focus, where to wear the bright colors, where to wear the dark colors, where to bring focus, where to have some sparkle, where what to show off. Do you wear a short skirt or a long skirt? Do you wear a belt or no belt? Do you go sleeveless or no sleeveless? It helps you know what to wear. Now, again, in the course, how to find your signature style, I didn't mean to talk about that so much, but it just, you know, it goes along with everything I teach. You know, I talk about your body type and I talk about what to wear for your body type, knowing your signature silhouettes. That's key. When you know that, you know how to put things together, you know what cuts to go for, you know what to work with, and it can just make such a difference. All right. Tip number three, redefine your style. Style is never a one and done. And I talk a lot about it, this in um, my podcast about the cycle of style, about when your style starts to break down. Whether your style is broken down or you just want to kind of reassess, kind of give it a little bit of a tweak, that doesn't really matter. But what does matter is that you redefine it. You're not just going back to do the same thing over and over and over. It is time to redefine. 
Your style now should not be the same as it was 10 years ago or five years ago, or maybe even a year ago. I know my style now is very different than it was a year ago or two years ago. There are certain things that are very similar, but there are certain things I'm not wearing anymore. There are certain things I'm doing in a different way. And some of it has to do with my body type. Some of it has to do with my hairstyle. Some of it has to do with my age or how I'm feeling or not really my age. I shouldn't even say that. Really more who I am. Who I am is very different than it was a year ago. How I show up is very different. My goals are different. I'm a different person and you are too. And so when you can redefine your style, then go back to podcast number 148 last episode, using your style to align with your goals or to reach your goals. When your style is aligned with your goals, this is where you ask yourself, who do I want to be? Who you want to be this year is probably not the same as who you wanted to be last year. It shouldn't be. And so as you move forward and reach a new goal or set a new goal, you want to redefine your style to be in alignment with that. You want to redefine your style for your lifestyle. You want to redefine your style for your body type, for who you are, for where you are in your journey. And so think of it as redefining, not just going back to the style you used to have. Maybe you you love the style you used to have and you can take elements from that, but don't try to replicate it because inevitably something is going to be different. Number four, choose timeless cuts. Now, this is something that I found myself doing. And ladies, I'm a dramatic. I have not really gravitated towards many timeless pieces. But all of a sudden, I find myself really drawn to a classic pair of straight leg cropped. Well, cropped gives it a little bit of a trendy look, but a classic pair of white sneakers, a classic black trench coat, a plas- classic designer handbag. I'm drawn to more classic, timeless pieces, which my supporting word is classic, so I shouldn't be too surprised. However, I'm finding myself a little bit more in the classic realm than I have been. And now my full style finder ID, when, if you've worked with me privately, you know that my style finder ID assessment gives you three words. Mine are dramatic, romantic, and classic. And I'm finding myself less boho, which, you know, that's my romantic side. I used to be very boho, a lot of flowy, a lot of layers. And there's a lot of that I'm not wearing anymore. In fact, a lot of the things I got rid of were more flowy boho pieces. There are some pieces I just will not get rid of that I know I'm going to want to wear. Or even if I'm not wearing now. However, there are a lot of things. It's just time to close that chapter and start a new one. And when I get rid of them, what I really want to add are more classic pieces, more timeless pieces. Timeless and transcend the trends. Pieces that aren't really in style and don't really ever go out of style. And so when you can choose those timeless cuts, I'm not saying everything has to be timeless, but when that's your foundation, I am reluctant to use this term, but I feel like it's appropriate here, and that is age appropriate. I feel like it's more age appropriate because we're not trying to look trendy, but we're we're also not looking matronly either. But lean on a more classic cut, and then you can bring in your more trendy or contemporary or on-point edge. Classic with a twist. That's a great way to think about style for women over 50. Now, I'm not saying if you're a full-on dramatic and you're ready to rock your dramatic, go for it. But my advice, if you're not sure if that's not what your style is, choose more classic cuts. Number five, keep it current. Now, ladies, we are not trendy. We are not trendy. That is the fastest way to look like you're trying too hard or you're trying to be something that you're not. We're not 25. We're not 30. We're 50. We're 60. We're 70. We're 80. We're however old. And when you rock, 
the trends that are right off the runway in the exact same way they're coming down the runway. It just doesn't look good. It looks like you're trying too hard. Now, there are always exceptions. And if there's something that is a trend that you know in your heart of hearts you have to have, go for it. But make sure you wear it in a way that feels right to you. Don't be dictated to. Don't feel like you have to get rid of or you have to bring in anything that any style expert says is hot or not. This is why I get so incensed about all the style experts talking about skinny jeans and how they're not in style. Okay, just because they're not in style doesn't mean you have to get rid of them. If that's the cut that genuinely works for your body type and makes you feel good, keep them. But if you just wore them because they were trendy and you don't really love them, let them go. Maybe you never bring them back. Maybe they weren't right for you to begin with. So only you know. But I encourage you, find a style resource you relate to, you resonate with, and that you can trust. And what I mean by trust, I guess, is more you know their style, you like their style, you respect their style, you understand, you can relate to it. Hopefully that's us. Hopefully that's us on Instagram at Shop Style Finder. You know, we're always trying to keep it current, show you style tips. But there are tons of other influencers out there. I can't even begin to tell you mine. I mean, I have so many. But find a style resource on, um, I should create a list. There's some great people that I like to follow. But find a style influencer that you can resonate with. Maybe it's somebody that's your age. Maybe it's a little bit younger. Maybe a little bit older. But there are so many style influencers out there. It pretty much every age that I'm really, really grateful to see it. And some, you know, look like models, only they're 40, 50, 60, 70. Some look like real women with real figures. Some are plus size. I mean, pretty much everything. Every, anybody can be an influencer in this day and age. And that's what I love. So find a style resource you relate to and you resonate with. Whether it's on Instagram, whether it's a blog, whether it's a podcast like mine, uh, whether it's a magazine, although I wish that there were a magazine out there for women over 40, over 50, over 60. There's really not. And I tell you what, I read magazines. I, I, in fact, I subscribe to a couple and I just can't stand what I see in there anymore. I don't even know why I bother because I feel like what I see is just, it's not useful. It's not helpful. I get more stuff just from watching people on Instagram than I do from magazines. And I'm really disappointed because I used to love magazines. I used to be able to pour over magazines and know what the trends were, how they related to me, what to pay attention to. Now I just feel like it's just so far-fetched. It's all very fantastical. And I know fashion is based on fantasy, right? But it's stuff that like I can't see anybody really wearing except maybe a celebrity if they had a professional stylist for, you know, like a certain event, but nobody would wear in real life. And so it can be hard to know, well, if I see this coming down the runway and it looks like something Lady Gaga would wear to an awards event, how the heck am I supposed to know what to wear in my everyday life? It doesn't help. It's not helpful. So find a style resource you resonate with. All right. Number six, clear out your closet regularly. One pitfall I see a lot of older women getting into, and I I have seen this because I've gotten into so many women's closets, is that they hold on to things way past their expiration date. I remember getting into a closet of a client one time, and she told me, she's like, oh my God, everything in here is like at least 20 years old. Every, almost everything. She's like, I don't need to buy any clothes because I already have all these clothes. I'm like, girl. Do you not know that like some of these things you should not be wearing anymore, which let me just say this. I know that there are certain styles that are classic and timeless, and there are certain styles that are trendy. However, if you bought something that's trendy 20 years ago, it doesn't mean it's become a classic, right? Or if you bought something that was a classic or timeless 20 years ago, it doesn't mean it's still going to work for you. 
her body had changed things fit differently but here's the thing she was wearing the same thing she had been wearing 20 years ago in the exact same way she was wearing it 20 years ago that is the fastest path to a rut she couldn't stand her clothes i'm like you just need to practically start over at that point and so my advice to you is clear out your closet regularly every season every month every week every year i don't know you you set the parameter whenever you feel like it but i would say at least twice a year and then i would do mini purges at least quarterly i like to get in there i know i've done a couple podcasts on like the top five items to get rid of your closet you know go in there and tell yourself okay i'm going to get rid of five things today it doesn't have to be a full-on closet purge it could be five items i'm going to pull five item items out of here you know, you do that enough times you have cleared out your closet but just start weeding through. Okay, what am I not wearing? What do I put on and I never leave the house in? What do I not love? What doesn't fit me? What doesn't flatter me? Go listen to my whole five F's of shopping. It's five F's of your closet too. <laughs> so clear out your closet regularly because when you do, it helps you to weed out and it helps you to know, oh, wow, I had 25 pairs of black pants. I tried them all on. I narrowed it down to I've only got five that actually fit me. I got rid of 20. So I now have some room in my closet. I can spread some things out. I can see what I have. And I'm not struggling every morning to figure out which pants actually fit. And so if you have multiples of a lot of multiples of something, I invite you to clear this out and narrow it down to just a few because too many is overwhelm. All right. Number seven, trust yourself. That is my best advice ever. If you never know what to wear or you don't know the answer to something or you're not sure, should I buy it? Should I not buy it? Trust yourself. Listen to your intuition and ask yourself, how does it make me feel? If you're looking at something and you're not sure if you should get rid of it, try it on. How do I feel on it? Maybe you realize, oh, this doesn't actually fit me anymore. Ooh, maybe my bus line got bigger, which happens to a lot of us. And you need to go up a size. And it just doesn't work. Get rid of it. Let it go. Put a basket in your closet. Just let it go. Don't tell yourself, if I lose weight, then it's going to fit again. Because are you really going to want to wear it? Probably not. So trust yourself. Because you, at the end of the day, are the best guidance you'll ever need. All right, let me go back through this. So number one, let color work for you, not against you. Number two, know your assets and attributes. Number three, redefine your style. Don't just go back to the same style you always had. Number four, choose timeless cuts. Number five, keep it current, but not trendy and find a style resource you resonate with. Number six, clear your closet regularly. Number seven, trust yourself. Now I'm going to throw in one actually Actually, I'm going to throw in one additional tip. Get good lingerie. That's right. Your body is changing. You And as you change, you need to make sure you have the right bra that fits. You need to have the right panties that fit or shapers or shape wear, whatever you need. You need the right undergarments. And now more than ever, they'll make a difference. I saw a woman the other day who had on a top and she had, it was a white top and she had on a bra that was just, oh my God, it was cutting into her. And it just created all these rolls around. It just looked uncomfortable, but it wasn't flattering. And I thought, okay, you know what? If you just changed your bra, you would change the, you would completely change your look. So wear lingerie that fits you, that supports you, and that gives you the foundation you need. Because as we age, we do need a little bit more help and a little bit more support. But the good thing is there is a lot of highly engineered, high-tech lingerie that can help. So that's my eighth bonus tip. How about that? All right, ladies, thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this, I invite you to share this with a friend because we're all in this together, right? And I also invite you to come join me over in the podcast group at Style by Mary Michelle podcast on Facebook, where I'm going to be sharing some behind the scenes of my own personal style journey. I'm going to be doing some lives and 
we'll be doing some other special things. So I will see you there. I hope you have a beautiful day and again, happy 2023. I love you ladies and I'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in to Style by Mary Michelle, where women come to get dressed in seven minutes or less. If you enjoyed this podcast, I invite you to leave me a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Style by Mary Michelle and shop our boutique at shopstylefinder.com for the best in upscale casual apparel. Better yet, if you're in the Raleigh area, come see us. We're located in the North Hills Shopping Center, the premier shopping district in Midtown Raleigh. For details and links mentioned in this episode, be sure to see the show notes. Have a beautiful week.